Hello everyone, welcome to the course uh, Expansive Soil. Uh, this will be the 8th lecture and it will be in module 4. We will be learning about the swelling behavior of the expansive soil. Today topic we will be focusing on how the soil swells or the swelling mechanism of an expansive soil. In the last class we discussed about the different kind of attractive forces and repulsive forces uh, and how do they exist in a clay water system. In this class we will learn how this uh, attractive and repulsive forces helps in the swelling behavior of the soil. When you talk about the swelling of expansive soil, generally the swelling takes place in two stages. The one is known as inner crystalline swelling, the second one is known as osmotic swelling. So, we will discuss about these stages of swelling one by one. The first one is a inner crystalline swelling. So, in inner crystalline swelling, a less amount of swelling of expansive soil takes place. This uh, swelling process takes place in generally 3 to 4 steps. In the first stage, you can see this is a dry montomonlite or an expansive clay mineral. You can see this is a la first layer of um, the water, the soil mineral and in between they have a cation. So, this cations can be like sodium, potassium, magnesium and calcium. Mostly they are in dehydrated or dry state. In the first stage, the interparticle, the separation between this layer is 9.6 angstrom. And in the first uh, stage, the water content is very less. Now, due to this um, hydration energy of this cations, they will try to absorb moisture. So, in the second stage, they will absorb a layer of water molecules and as a result of which the separation between these two plates will increase to 12.3 angstrom. Here we can see a layer of water molecules is being adsorbed by this cations and due to this uh, adsorbed of water molecules, the water contained can increase from 1 percent to 6.2 percent. Whereas, the distance got increased from 9.6 angstrom to 12.3 angstrom. In the third stage of this swelling, another layer of water molecule got adsorbed by this cations and as a result of this again the inter layer distance increased from 12.3 angstrom to 15.2 angstrom. And due to this increase in the water layer, the water content was increased from 6 0.2 percent in the second stage to 16.5 percent in the third stage. After this third stage, there will be the fourth stage. In the fourth stage, up to four layer of water molecules get adsorbed by this cation and as a result of which uh, the again the separation between these plates got increased a, a value higher than 15.2 angstrom and generally it can goes up to 20 angstrom. And here the water contained increase up to 25 percent. So, this is the fourth stage of the inner crystalline swelling. And at this stage, the inner crystalline swelling ceases. And because of this inner crystalline swelling, generally the inter layer distance increase up to 10 angstrom. So, here we can see these are the different four stages of all this inter inner crystalline swelling. And due to which the water content got increased from 1 to 25 percent. Now, in order to prevent this uh, uh, inner crystalline swelling to take place, we need a large amount of pressure. If you look into this, uh, to prevent from absorbing one layer of the water molecules, you need 400 Newton per mm square of pressure. So, this is known as the swelling pressure. So, swelling pressure can be defined as the amount of pressure which will be required to prevent the soil from swelling. Similarly, for the second stage of swelling, you need 100 Newton per mm square of pressure to prevent the soil from absorbing the second water layer. Similarly, for the third and fourth layer, you need 27 Newton per mm square of pressure. So, these are the swelling pressure for different stages of this swelling. We can see with increase in the layer of the water molecules, the swelling pressure keep on decreasing. Generally, in inner crystalline swelling, a less amount of swelling takes place 
in comparison to the other stage of swelling that is known as osmotic swelling. And depending on the type of cations, generally this amount of swelling is bit different. Here we can see this uh, inner, uh, inner crystalline swelling, these are the clay plates and in between them there is an exchangeable cations, it is in dry stage. In the first layer of water molecules, you can see these are the first layer of the water molecules are being adsorbed by these cations as a result of which the plate separation is increased. This is uh, the fourth layer you can see with the cations are fully hydrated in this stage which is result in the repulsive pores and expanding the clay plates which result in the swelling of the soil. Since uh, the inner crystalline swelling has a very high value of swelling pressure, generally this is being ignored for any engineering application. The next stage of swelling is the osmotic swelling. In this osmotic swelling, a large amount of swelling takes place. The osmotic swelling takes place because of the process of osmosis. Here we can see these are the two clay plates negatively charged and in between there are cations. And also there will be some water present over here that can be some adsorbed water. So we have a cation concentration C1 which will be inside this part and outside of this uh, clay system, clay water system, we have another concentration C2. Generally this C1 is very high in comparison to C2. As a result of this concentration gradient, the water from outer system will enter into the inner system. As a result of which more water enters, the separation between the plate, two plates will increase. And also some of the cations will also move out to equilibrate the concentration. As the water moves in, the plate separation which was 2D earlier becomes 2D dash where 2D dash is very high in comparison to 2D and there is a large amount of swelling takes place. So generally for this stage of swelling, the uh, swelling pressure is less than 2 Newton per mm square and a large amount of swelling takes place in osmotic swelling in comparison to the inner crystalline swelling. If we see the water molecule over here, you can see this is a clay plate and as you move away from the clay plates, the cation concentration keep on decreasing and here the water can be divided into two way, one is double layer water, another is a free water. So, the free water has the properties of uh, like normal water whereas double layer water are bond, bounded by so, cation, some cation, uh, some attraction and attractive and repulsive forces. If we draw the electrical potential versus distance, the electrical potential next to the clay plate will be significantly higher and as we move away from the clay plates, the electrical potential will keep on decreasing. And at a point far away from the plate distance, the electrical potential will be almost 0. That point is known as reference point. Now this osmotic swelling depends on many other things like uh, concentration of the ions, the valency of the ions, the dielectric constant, the pH and since those uh, controls the osmotic swelling, those also controls the total swelling of an expansive soil. And as I told you, the amount of osmotic swelling is significantly higher in comparison to inner crystalline swelling. Any change in osmotic swelling will also influence the total swelling of an expansive soil. So here we can we will see how this uh, swelling of uh, expansive soil takes place. Here I am taking an example of montomolnite mineral. This is a ex exchangeable cation. This can be a sodium, potassium, magnesium like this one. And this is in the dry state or little amount of water is there and outside we have pure water. Now if we compare the concentration here is C1 and concentration here is C2. The concentration of C1 is significantly higher in comparison to C2. Now because of this concentration gradient, there will be a flow of water into this system. 
So, here we can see the water molecules will enter into the system and when a large amount of water will enter, the plate separation will increase and this will take place un until there is an equilibrium between C2 and C1. As a result of this plate separation, the uh, swelling of the soil takes place. So, the reversing uh, takes place when we put an uh, expansive soil into a high salt concentration. Say uh, example, this is an expanded soil or swollen soil which has been already expanded because of the ad, uh, absorption of the water by this exchangeable cations. Now, we will put this one into a high concentration uh, salt solution. So, now this is C1 and C2. Now, the case will be reversed that means the C2 is higher than C1. So, as a result of which the water molecules will move in the opposite direction. So, we can see over here. So, water will move away from the clay plates and it will go to the outer solution. This movement will take place until and unless there is an equilibrium between the concentration C1 and C2. And as the water molecules move away, the plate will come to a closer spacing and we say that one is a shrinkage of the soil or shrinkage of expansive soil. And because of this reverse mechanism, the volume of the soil will be decreased. Uh, there are two kind of water, one is free water and another is uh, diffused double layer of water. Apart from this uh, two layer of water, there is another layer of water which is known as adsorbed water. This adsorbed water is uh, strongly attached by the negative charge of the clay plates and similarly it is attached with uh, the clay plates because of the hydrogen bonding between the clay plates and the water molecules. Here we can see the clay plates are negatively charged. Now we know that water molecule is a bipolar. So this is the positive end and the negative end. This is the positive end, negative end. Similarly, the another end of this water molecule will also be attached to here and like this. But this force of attraction will keep on decreasing as we move away from the plate. That means this layer of water molecules will be held very tightly in comparison to this layer and consequently this layer will be held very tightly in comparison to third layer. So, when we move away the force of attraction will keep on decreasing. So, this takes place for few layers of the water molecules and as this are very strongly adsorbed this is known as adsorbed water. Now, this adsorbed water has a different properties in comparison to the free water or diffused double layer water. Here if you compare the density of the water, generally it has a very high density next to the clay plates and the density will keep on decreasing when we go with one to fourth layer of the water molecules. So, for the first layer of the water molecules, the density is around 1.4 gram per centimeter cube whereas for the fourth layer it becomes 0.7 gram per centimeter cube and then again it starts to increase and it becomes 1 gram per cm cube for free water. Then comes the viscosity. The viscosity of this adsorbed water is significantly higher in comparison to the free water and if we compare with the first layer of the water molecules, generally this is around 100 times more in comparison to the free water. Similarly, the dielectric constant, the dielectric constant of the adsorbed water is very less in comparison to free water. So, here you can see the dielectric constant is in between 2 to 50 and it is around one tenth of the free water very next to the cl clay plates. So, uh, for a reference, uh, the free the dielectric constant of free water is 80. Here you can see the adsorbed water has a very less value of dielectric constant in comparison to the free water. After the adsorbed water, there will be the diffuse double layer water. So, here you, you can see uh, this is a clay surface which is negatively charged. This is a cation. Now, this negatively charged clay plate 
will try to attract this cation towards this direction. At the same time due to the concentration gradient, this cation will try to move away from the clay plates. This is quite um, similar to our atmosphere. Our atmosphere is attracted by the gravitational force of the uh, earth. So, if we compare this is our earth surface and if this is the atmosphere, the atmosphere or the gas molecules present in the atmosphere will be attracted towards the earth surface because of the force of gravitation. Now, this gas molecules will try to diffuse away towards the outer atmosphere because of the diffusion. Now, they are will be a combined force so which will be attractive and which will be repulsive. And because of these two forces, they will be distributed in such a way, in such a way that their concentration will keep on decreasing as we move away from the earth's surface. Similar thing happens over here. This cation will be attracted towards the clay surface because of this negative charge and also it will try to move away from the clay plates because of the, the diffusion. Due to this attractive and repulsive force, this will, uh, this will be distributed in a diffuse double layer where their concentration it, uh, is keep on decreasing when we move away from the clay plates. So, here we have larger amount of cations and uh, as we move away from the clay surface, the amount of cations will keep on decreasing. So, this layer is known as diffuse double layer. Here we can see a clay plates and it has negative charges we know. So, these are this red red buttons uh, are the cations, the yellow one the anions. This is the distribution of this uh, cations and anions in a diffuse double layer. Here we can see it says uh, S view of the clay surface with negative charge. Next to the clay surface, there will be large amount of cations and as you move away from this plate, the cation concentration will keep on decreasing. But at the same time, if we look into the concentration of the anion, the con concentration of the anion will be very less next to the clay surface because the negative charge of the clay surface that will repel this anion. But as we move away from the clay plates, the anion concentration will keep on increasing. And after a certain distance that is known as the reference point, the anion concentration and the cation concentration will be almost identical. Here in the dry state, the negative charge of this um, clay plates will be balanced by these cations which are known as exchangeable cations and the examples are calcium, magnesium, sodium and potassium. Generally, these are the exchangeable cations present over here. And when we add water to this clay plates, this uh, cations and anions float around the clay plate particles and this configuration where the cations and anions are floated together is known as a diffuse double layer. The cation concentration decreases with the distance from the surface of the particles whereas the anion concentration will increase with the increase in the distance from the clay plates. Depending on what kind of cations we have, the distribution of the cations will also be different. Say for example, if we take a monovalent cation, we will get a distribution like this one, where the cation concentration will be keep on decreasing with the uh, distance. At the same time, if we take a divalent cation, this the distribution of the cation will be followed this curve. Similarly, the trivalent cation will follow this curve. If we compare this, this three, so we can see the trivalent cations, generally we have a large amount of trivalent cations next to the clay plates and it will, as we move away, it will decrease quite rapidly in comparison to divalent and monovalent cation. Similarly, divalent cation will also decrease rapidly in comparison to the monovalent cations. This is because of this, there are forces, higher forces of attraction between the cations and the negative charge. 
since the trivalent cation has three charges it is strongly attracted whereas the divalent cation has plus two charges so it will be less strongly attracted towards in comparison to trivalent cations and monovalent will be less strongly attracted in comparison to divalent and trivalent cations. If we consider the distribution of the cations and anions we can see how they are distributed here. In this plot we can see this is the ion concentration plotted in y axis and distance from the particles is plotted on x axis. The cation concentration is significantly high next to the clay plates because the negative clay plates has negatively charged and due to this negative charge the cations are very strongly attached here but as you move away the cation concentration will keep on decreasing. If we compare with the anion concentration some of the anions will be present here and their concentration will keep on increasing as you move away from the clay plates. But as you move away to a far distance the anion concentration and cation concentration will come to an equilibrium and they will be almost identical. So, this point is known as reference point as I told earlier. Now, if we calculate the total surface area say for example, to total surface area BAD. So, that will represent the excess of this counter ions, excess of this positive ions which are present in this uh, diffuse double layer. Similarly, if we calculate the area BCD, so that will tell us about the total deficiency of the ions of the same size and the, the total area ACD will tell you about the next diffuse layer charge or the surface charge of the clay surface. So, from this plot we can determine what will be the total excess of this counter ions, what will be the total deficiency of the ions of the same sign and what will be the net diffuse layer charge and the sur or surface charge of the clay surface or clay water system from this uh, distribution of the ions with distance plot. Then the question arises how these cations or anions are distributed themselves in a double layer. To calculate uh, the distribution of the anions and cations in a double layer, there are certain theories which are available. The most um, uh, uh, widely used theories is Guy Chapman's theory of diffuse double layer. This was first given by 1910 by Guy and then it was modified by Chapman in 1913 and combined together this is known as Guy Chapman's theory of diffuse double layer. This theory explains the effect of the various parameters of the medium on thickness of the diffuse double layer. This theory was developed considering two well known equations. One is a Poisson's equations which tells us about the variation of the electrical potential with respect to distance. And the second uh, equations which is Boltzmann equations which describes the relationship between the ion distributions and the electrical potential. So, these two equations are used to derive the Guy Chapman's theory of diffuse double layer. Uh, before the derivation of this layer certain assumptions uh, were made. So, these are the uh, four assumptions which were made to derive this uh, diffuse double layer th theory. The first one is the ions in the double layer are point charges and there are no interaction between them. The second one is the charge on the particle surface is uniformly distributed. The third one is the particle surface is a plate that is a large relative to the thickness of the diffuse double layer. Then the fourth one is the permittivity of the medium next to the particle surface is independent of its position. So, these are the four assumptions which were made in deriving the diffuse double layer thickness by Guy Chapman's. So, we will go uh, to those uh, equations how it has been derived. So, first uh, the Boltzmann equations which uh, tells us about the distribution of the ions. Here if the concentration of the ions of type I is N I in a force field of equilibrium then the equation uh, then the using the Boltzmann's equation n i will be equals to n i naught into exponential e 
I naught minus E i divided by k t. This subscript O that means the reference state. If you could recall, I state the reference point where the concentration of the anion and cation was uh, same. So, that is the reference state or reference point which is a large distance from the surface. E is the potential energy, T is the temperature in Kelvin, K is the Boltzmann's constant which is a value of 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Then the potential energy of an ion in an electric field can be derived using this equation E i equals to V i into E in into psi, where I, V i is the ion valency, i can be like V 1, V 2 like monovalent, divalent, trivalent, E is the electronics charge which is equals to 1.602 into 10 to the minus 19 coulomb and psi is the electrical potential. Now we know that the electrical potential decreases with increase in the distance from the charge surface. So, earlier we have derived this one or we have seen how this uh, electrical potential changes with the distance. So, next to the clay plate the, the value is significantly high, but as we move away it will keep on decreasing at a reference state it becomes 0. So, electrical potential decreases with the increase in the distance from the charge surface. The potential at the surface is designated by psi naught that is the electrical surface potential. At the reference state E i naught it will be equals to 0 because the electrical potential uh, psi will be 0 at the reference state. Since psi equals to 0, E i naught will be equals to 0. So, therefore, if we go to this part E i naught will be equals to 0. So, this is 0 E will be equals to 0 E i naught minus E i will be equals to minus E i and minus E i will be equals to minus V 1 V i into E into psi. So, the finally the Boltzmann's equation will be equals to so, n i naught into exponential minus V i into E into psi by k t. Now, let this is the equation 2. Now, let us uh, draw the distribution of the anion and cations with distance. So, this is uh, whatever we have already studied. If we compare the cation distribution, this is clay plates, this is the clay plates negatively charged. and this is a reference state or reference point. Next to the clay plate, uh, the number of cations are very large or the cation uh, concentration is very high. As we move away from the clay plate, its concentration will keep on decreasing and at a reference state, it becomes equals to N i naught. For cations, uh, the V i becomes positive because say for example, if you take sodium so, V i will be equals to 1, for calcium it will be 2 and the electrical potential is negative which is for all the cations. So, this term minus V i into psi will be a positive one because the positive, negative and the negative becomes positive. Similarly, if you look into the anion concentration, anion distribution in fact, the anion concentration next to the clay plate will be very small and it will keep on increasing and it will reach to the same value of the cation con concentration at the reference state O. Here the V i will be negative because the of anion, psi will be negative because the electrical potential is negative. So, the product of minus V i into E psi will be a negative one. So, here we can see the positive and negative signs are used for the cations and anions respectively. We know that Poisson's equations uh, equals to d square psi by dx square equals to rho by epsilon. So, this is known as Poisson's equation. So, let the equation becomes is equation number 3, where x equals to distance from the surface which is expressed in meter, rho is the charge density which is in c, in c per meter cube, coulomb per meter cube epsilon is the permittivity of the medium that is c square j inverse into m inverse 
and when we calculate the charge density for a cation and anion anion environment so that will be equals to e into summation of vi into ni where vi is ni will be equals to v plus into n plus plus v minus into n minus so where ni is ion per unit volume v plus is a valency of the cations v is a vv minus is a valency of the anion now using the ni from equation 2 uh, this is the ni ni equals to ni not into exponential this one now we will replace this ni value in this equation so if we replace ni value and take from this equation 2 the equation becomes this equation becomes equals to rho equals to e into summation of vi ni vi and in place of ni it will be ni not into exponential minus vi into e epsilon by kt now the substituting the value of rho in equation 3 the equation 3 will become equals to d square psi by dx square equals to e by epsilon into summation of vi into ni not into exponential minus vi into e into psi by kt this is the equation the, this is a differential equation for the electrical double layer adjacent to a planar surface now the solution of this equation will helps in determining the electrical potential and the ion concentration as a function of distance from the plate surface by solving this equation we can get the diffuse double layer equation let how to solve I just i will give you an example assuming a simple case of a single type of ion which are cations and anions of equal valency so we will take um, two ions v plus and v minus say for example sodium na plus this is an example i am giving this is cl minus okay both valency is plus 1 and minus 1 that means the valency is 1 negative and positive and at reference state the concentration will becomes identical so n plus uh, no plus equals to no minus equals to n naught or this is the concentration of this anion and cation at the reference state the valency v plus and minus of v minus say, this is plus 1 this is minus 1 so minus of minus 1 will be equals to plus 1 so let this be v uh, we know that n plus equals to n naught into exponential minus v e into psi by k t this we are replacing v i by these terms since um, uh, this is a positive one this is we get and negative of negative will becomes positive here so therefore the negative sign is here there is positive sign over here the charge density will be equals to e into summation of v i into n i which will be equals to e into v plus into n plus plus v minus into n minus now we will replace this n plus by this equation and n minus by this equation by replacing those values we will get this equation and when we will solve finally this we will get charge density will be equals to minus twice e v n naught into hyperbolic function of sin sin h into v e psi by k t now replacing the value of rho in equation 3 we will get d square psi by dx square equals to 2 n naught v e by epsilon sin s into v e psi by k t this is the diffuse double layer equation for a single layer when you solve this uh, we will get few dimensionless constant in the name of potential function and distance function the potential function will be y equals to v e into psi by k t z will be equals to v e psi naught by k t so these are the two potential function and this is the uh, distance function where this is chi equals to k into x where k square is equals to this value and 1 by k equals to epsilon k t divided by twice n naught into e square v into v square so this equation will helps to find out the diffuse double layer thickness this equation 
will tell us about the thickness of the diffuse double layer and the parameters on which the diffuse double layer thickness depends. This is all about a single diffuse double layer, but hardly there is a single diffuse double layer. In a system, uh, in water clay water system, there will be interacting double layers. So, here you can see this is a single double layer, this is a single double layer, but in a clay water system where the two double layers, two single double layers interact, we will get interacting double layers. Here we can see this is the, uh, the plot between the electrical potential and distance, the plot between the number of ions and distance. This is the electrical potential, this is the variation of the electrical potential as we move away from the plate it will decrease and then it will reach to a mid, mid plane potential which will be equals to V e psi by k t. Then it will start to increase like this one. Similarly, if you compare with the cation concentration it will keep on decreasing as you move away from the plate and it will reach to an identity value over here and then again it will try to increase. This is the anion concentration, it will decrease and it again it will be remain same. So, this is the interacting double layer which we will get by combining to single double layer. Although this Guy Chapman's theory or diffuse double layer theory is um, quite widely used in deriving the diffuse double layer thickness, it has certain limitations. First of all, it has been assumed that the ions are point charges. That means, the size of the ions are not considered. Then the water structure and electrical properties of the water molecules are ignored. Then the dielectric constant of the free and adsorbed water were assumed same. I had already discussed how the dielectric constant of the free and adsorbed water are significantly different, but in this uh, diffuse double layer theory they were assumed to be same. Next is the, the clay particle charges are assumed to be uniformly distributed throughout the clay plates, but in actually there are some localization exist. So, that means it is not uniformly distributed throughout the clay surface. The fifth point is the hydration of the ion particles are ignored. So, these are the few limitations of the diffuse double layer derived by Guy Chapman's. So, in order to overcome this limitations, uh, few more uh, theory has been developed, which is uh, the first one is the Stern model of diffuse double layer. It was first given by Stern in 1924. In Stern layer, they have considered a counter cations, which are present very close to the plate. The center of the positive charge of the cation can come very close to the surface of the particles and adsorbed on the stern layer. The distance of this closest approach to the charge surface is depend on the size of this ion. If you change the size of the ion, the distance to the closest approach also changes. Now, if we look into this, uh, we have the, this is the electric distribution of the electrical potential with distance, then we will get a di distribution like this one, where the electrical potential first linearly ch changes from psi naught to psi delta, then it decreases like a diffuse double layer. So, this psi delta is known as the stern potential and psi naught is known as surface potential. This counter ions are separated from the clay surface by a distance delta and this delta is known as the stern layer. This can also be uh, explained in terms of a molecular condenser layer which will be formed because of the strongly adsorbed cation next to the clay surface or uh, these are the known as the counter ions which are very strongly adsorbed to the clay surface and the form the stern layer. Now, when we add some solution to it, the diffuse double layer will decrease and some counter ions will move from double layer to the stern layer and thereby decreasing the stern potential sigma d. If we calculate the net charge, then if 
sigma s is the net counter ion charge of the stern layer and sigma d is the net counter ion charge of the diffuse table layer the summation of these two will give you the total charge of the uh, diffuse table layer or the cleft surface. So, this is uh, the stern layer which was given by stern in 1924. This stern layer has generally a low dielectric constant in comparison to the free uh, water and also uh, before deriving this uh, theory the stern considered that unlikely the guy model the distance of the closest approach of the counter ion to the charge surface is limited by this ions and this uh, counter ions or the cations uh, do not take part in the formation of diffuse double layer and beyond this stern layer the next layer is the diffuse double layer and we need to remember that with the decrease in the hydrated ions of this uh, stern layer the number of adsorbed ions increases on the stern layer. Now, next is the Graham model of diffuse double layer. In Graham model of double layer, Graham consider the two planes, one is known as outer Helmholtz plane and another one is known as inner Helmholtz plane. The Graham made a distinction between the plane passing through the centers of the counter ions of the closest approach to the, sur to the surface and the limit of the diffuse double layer or the position of the closest approach of the co ions that is your OHP. So, he assumed two planes, one is inner Helmholtz plane, this is a plane of the center of the chemisorbed anions. So, these are some of the anions which are specifically adsorbed on the clay surface. These anions overcome the electrostatic repulsion due to, impress, due to the influence of the strong specific adsorption and enter into the stern layer across the outer and crossing the outer Helmholtz plane. This inner Helmholtz plane refers to the plane which is passes through the center of this specifically adsorbed anions and this plane is known as the inner Helmholtz plane and generally its thickness is around 1.5 angstrom. The outer Helmholtz plane is located at a cationic radius which will be equals to the radius of the uh, the radius of this cation plus a molecular layer of water. Uh, the distance between the solid surface to the OHP is called as stern layer and is equals to 6 angstrom. So, if we plot the variation between the electrical potential and the distance, this is the surface potential and next to the IHP it will decrease uh, significantly linearly also this is electrical potential at IHP and then this will be electrical potential as OHP and that will be equals to sigma d that is your stern potential and this thickness is known as the stern layer and next to this OHP this is the diffuse double layer. So, the basically in Graham model he proposed the IHP and OHP considering the chemisorbed of some specifically adsorbed anions. Next will be the zeta potential. We know that um, cl the clay surface adsorbs some cations like uh, if this is a clay surface these are the some cations which are very strongly adsorbed over here and then comes the water molecules these are the few layers of the water molecules which are very strongly attached. So, if we draw this, uh, this is clay surface, this layer is known as turn potential. Now, what happens? These water molecules are very strongly attached. Next to this layer is diffuse double layer. So, generally this will be attracted in this direction, diffuse double layer water will move in this direction. So, there will be a separation between immobile and mobile water surface. So, this is also known as a slip plane. So, due to the opposing effect of drag of water molecules and electrostatically pull by moving the particles towards the clay surface, the diffuse double layer will be sheared at certain point or that is a slip plane. That plane is known as shear plane 
and the potential at this shear plane will be known as zeta potential. Generally, this plane disting distinguish between the mobile fluid from immobile fluid. The magnitude of the zeta potential indicates the degree of electrostatic repulsion between the particles in a clay suspension. If the zeta potential is more, that means more amount of repulsion is there and the particles will be in suspended state. If we add some salt solution to it, then the zeta potential will decrease. That means um, the repulsion between the particles will decrease and the particle will coagulate or flocculate. So, therefore, the zeta potential indicates the stability of a colloidal system. Higher is the zeta potential, higher will be the dispersion, lower is the zeta potential, lower will be the dispersion and higher will be the flocculation. So, when we add some salt concentration to it, some of the counter ions move towards the stern layer which results in the decrease in the zeta potential and that leads to the flocculation of the water molecules. These are the few points which I discussed in today's class. So, with this uh, I would like to end uh, today's class. These are the few of the references uh, which are used for preparing this class. In the next uh, lecture, we will be learning about uh, what are the different factors which controls the diffusible layer thickness and how they changes the engineering behavior of expansive soil. With this, I would like to conclude today's lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks.